Welcome back everyone. Today we are back working on my layout. So I have uh, decided where the water is going to be on the layout. And I have made a pattern that I will transfer to uh, a sheet of styrofoam. Actually two pieces of styrofoam because I need it to be uh, at least four inches high. So next We'll move this pattern onto the styrofoam, trace it, and cut it out. So I have my styrofoam all cut. Next, I'm going to use uh, liquid nails. Now again, I'm keeping it a half inch in from the water line because there's going to be um, plaster stone that we're going to be applying in front of this. And we'll put weights on this. After we get it exactly where we want it. Okay, <laughs> that is not too bad. We'll let this completely dry overnight. And then I've got some carving to do because I want this to gradually come up on the sides. And we'll put rocks on both sides of it. I'll probably put some stone wall on the front. But it's neat to see it taking shape. So some time has passed uh, since I last recorded and all of the styrofoam is dried, completely uh, glued in place. Um, and then I made molds of a tunnel portal and a retaining wall. And I've been pouring a lot of plaster. So as you can see, um, I'm covering the whole front of it with um, stone. Um, then after they were completely dry, I uh, actually last night uh, was up and stained all of the walls a uh, dark gray and then went in and painted individual stones using these colors and then uh, dry brushed it with uh, slate gray. Um, the the red brick section, um, I have three of them so far. Um, those were done by my friend James Powell. And he these are actually uh, from a mold that he made. And uh, for the master mold, he actually laid in every single little HO scale brick to make his master mold. Uh, and then he made these for me. So um, I even have some on the front of this area because there will be a uh, bridge right here for cars to go over. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my liquid nails and put glue all on the front of this and then um, put all of my brickwork, stonework uh, on the front of it. So I saved a lot of rock castings from my last layout. So I'm just kind of piecing it together and then I'll take some, once I get these glued down and in place, I'll take some plaster and fill in the cracks in between the pieces. And then once that all dries, I'll uh, match the paint to the rock that already exists. 
So the rock work is all done. I actually used moldesine plaster from Woodland Scenics and just filled in all of the cracks in between the pieces that I already had and uh, then did some painting to it. So I'll take the camera off the tripod and uh, give you a close up look at, at it. And I do apologize that I didn't show uh, more of the process. Um, to be honest with you, when I first told people that I was going to start a new layout, I was amazed at the response that I received. Uh, really, I was overwhelmed. And uh, at first I felt pressure. And uh, so I just wanted to get a feel for the direction that it was going and how it was going to look uh, before I really dove into um, filming it. And uh, that may sound a little weird, but uh, I just was feeling a little nervous about it. But I am really happy with the direction that it's going. So, um, and there's so much more to do that I will show you mold making, uh, mixing plaster, um, painting rocks. Uh, I will start to show you um, every step. So, uh, but it's nice to just have a feel of the direction that it's going. And like I said, I'm pretty happy with the, the results that I'm getting so far. So I thought I would have some fun and do some scenery work. Um, some of this will be covered, uh, so I need to get in all of the little bushes and grass. Um, there is a bridge that gets put in right there, and a, a train will curve right through there. So. Uh, You'll see it from low angles and especially when I go to photograph it, but just looking down on it, some of this may be hidden, but uh, you understand, I need to get that in before, get my bushes in before I put my bridge in. And then I have to make a couple piers, but um, this structure will go out here somewhere and then I'll have another pier and this structure will go out here. And this is my recent build of Nickerson Landing. And then this gets a, uh, a ramp that goes up to it so that boats can go inside of it. Uh, and there'll be piers for both of those and then uh, a connecting pier so like I said some of this will be covered so I'm not going to go super detailed with it but uh, I am getting some bushes and little trees glued in so I've already started and uh, these are just super tree armatures and uh, I sprayed them with hairspray and then sprinkled on um, some green. Next I'm going to get some bushes along this wall. And these little bushes are from Scenic Express. I actually had these on a diorama. I've disassembled a couple of my dioramas um, just to get some of the large uh, bushes and greenery off of it so I could put it on to my layout. Okay. 
This is very fun when you get to this stage and you're able to start doing some scenery. Um, I will definitely be uh, jumping around a lot. I'm going to take my glasses off because I need my glasses for far away, not for close up. So that will help things a lot. Some of these have um, some pink insulation foam from my diorama base. So I'm just carving it. I love doing scenery work. It's very fun. I guess because you can see it come together pretty quickly. So as you can see, it's very... Um, I like to have everything that I need right in front of me. That way I don't have to get up and hunt for something. Um, it's all just right here. Uh, I can just reach for it. That way you don't get slowed down. Maybe a couple more little bushes. Now your bushes want to go in low areas, areas where water would collect and then um, that's how all these bushes grow so big because the water just sits in those little cracks and uh, helps them to grow. Um, I have one big one. So when you buy these bushes from Scenic Express. They have um, grass tufts and little bushes. They come on a sheet of paper. And you just peel them off. Um, you just have to add some glue. Okay, now I also have, um, in Colorado, where I live, <laughs> we have uh, tumbleweed, like sagebrush, along the side of the road. Um, I have to drive probably an hour away to, to get some, but um, in the ditches on the side of the highway, you'll see just tons of this stuff, and it's just awesome detail I mean it's perfect for HO scale so we're just gonna put some little fallen sorry little fallen branches um, I think that's a good spot once you figure out where you're gonna put it sorry just checking the camera to make sure I'm on camera Little fallen twigs and branches are just great little detail to add. You just have to keep moving it around until you're happy with it. You want it to look natural, so you don't want to just glue it down anywhere. You want it to look like um, if it actually fell off of a tree, um, this is where it would land. So this bows this way. And so originally I had it like this and it just did not look natural um, because the area dips down. So this lays right inside of the area. The Elmer's glue dries clear. So um, it's not a problem. And if you ever do have any that shows up, just take, I take a real small fine little paintbrush and dab some of the rock color on it. Um, what else? I do have some olive green underbrush. Maybe we could put some on here and there. So now I am just gonna find all the little low spots. 
and then just start to glue in some little little bushes and grass Start with some fine stuff. I use this um, when I do my trees. Like I would glue more branches on this and then spray it with um, hairspray and then just sprinkle on everything and it just sticks. So with the super tree material, um, you can glue these, break off all the little branches and glue these onto your armatures um, so there's a lot of different techniques and i will definitely show you i'll go into that when we get to an area that has uh more trees but for now uh, we're just going to work on these bushes So I've got a mixture of coarse turf and fine turf, but I believe it's all olive green. And we'll just continue doing some little greenery in our cracks. And I will definitely be ordering some more scenic stuff. The little grass tufts, I love those from uh, Scenic Express. Um, I'll order some more of those. But like I said, I don't want to go too heavy because um, a lot of this is covered up. Um, it'll show a little bit in photos. I can zoom in in a little bit so that you can get a closer look. If your fingers start to get a little sticky, you just use your tweezers. It's nice to let that glue sit there for a little bit because it actually starts to dry just a little bit and um, gets a little, a little bit sticky. All right, this deserves a coffee break. I will put a little bit of um, the watered down glue over the top of those bushes that I just added. This is full strength on my workbench. I have one that is just, that I mix, it's half water, half glue. So real quick, I wanted to show you that I have, uh, I made up a stain using black, burnt umber, and a really dark gray. This is called zinc, but they're all Americana paints. And uh, I mixed them all together and I, I made a wash that I put along the lower, I probably went a half inch even along the bottom of all of my rock to represent that the water level sometimes gets to that height or maybe you know waves come in and splash up against it so um, i just made the lower half like i said a half inch all the way around a little darker and eventually i'll go over those areas with a 
uh, a clear gloss, a high gloss, to make it look shiny like it's wet. I also painted some of my styrofoam. I got this tan color at Home Depot for like five or seven dollars, a whole gallon of it because it was a mist tint. Um, it's actually kind of pink when you're up close and you see it in person, uh, but that's okay. I'm just covering up the white for now. Um, and I got all of my, not all of my fascia put on, but some of it. So, um, I cut sections and actually I put a stool under it um, and, and stacked up some wood so that it was the correct height. And then from the back side, I took a pencil and outlined um, the landscape. And then cut it and then pre-drilled holes all around the edge. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if my camera is showing over here, but anyway there's studs that were sticking out for two by the end of the two by fours that were sticking out that i just um, screwed into um, and before i attached it i used liquid nails uh, with my caulking gun and put liquid nails on the edge of the tabletop and then on all of the two by fours that showed and then stuck it on there and then attached it. The next step will be to paint this black. And I am going to use a satin block. Um, I've used flat paints in the past and the problem is um, if things spill on it or if it gets dusty or dirty um, it's hard to clean where if you use a satin you can take a damp rag or a damp sponge and simply wipe it off and stuff comes right off of it okay so as you can see the fascia is all painted um, it's actually called kettle black so it's not a real dark deep black uh, I guess it has a little bit of a, a, a gray to it, uh, but I just didn't want it to stand out. I just kind of wanted to blend a little bit more. Um, so I chose Kettle Black. Um, it is from Valspar. Uh, Valspar is the Lowe's brand of paint. Um, and for those of you that don't maybe paint very often, uh, when you open any can of paint, the first thing you should do is take a hammer and nail and poke a hole in that little recessed trim area around the opening. I put six holes around this. That way when you pour it, all that paint doesn't collect in the edge of your your container um, it drains back down in the can through those holes so i wanted to mention real quick that i painted my fascia with a paint roller and i always keep a small trash bag uh, right next to the paint roller and the tray that way uh, when I'm done, I can just slide, put the paint roller on the tray, slide the whole thing in the trash bag, carry it outside. I take my hose and I spray the uh, paint roller, completely spray the paint out of it. And you can do that maybe one or two times, uh, but then the paint roller is pretty much trash. And uh, they're cheap enough, they're like maybe two, 250 for a paint roller. So uh, you might as well just buy another one and, uh, and use that. Uh, but uh, I think that works good if, uh, if you're on a tight budget and you wanna save your paint roller, 
Um, like I said, put it in a trash bag, carry it outside, uh, take the hose to it and, and spray all the paint out of it. And because it's water-based, it, it'll come right out. And the skirt below it is a really dark brown because that was the skirt that I used on my previous layout. So I had tons of that fabric, so I just went ahead and uh, used it again. So um, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some value to the water to make it look like it's um, deep. So it's the same sort of idea as the clouds. Uh, we're going to work fast while the paint is wet. And I'm using the same, same brush. It's a three inch, uh, a three inch wide brush. Um, I believe I got this at Home Depot. If it starts to dry on us, uh, I'll go back in and wet it. Sometimes I use a, a fine uh, spray mist bottle and I'll spray the area to keep it wet. Um, my air conditioner is running and it's pretty cool here in the basement so um, this is probably going to start to dry on me but I'll just try to work fast and get it done. So again, I'm using a three inch wide paintbrush. Um, the company that makes this brush is called Purdy. And uh, they make really good brushes. The bristles are really soft. Okay, so it's pretty wet. I'm gonna set this down so we don't spill it. Calypso Blue, Desert Turquoise, Navy Blue, and Midnight Blue. Um, and there's still blue on our brush. So I'm starting with the turquoise. And just kind of going around the edges. Okay, so this is the uh, desert turquoise and we're just putting that next to our land area and I definitely don't have this down to a science I'm just kind of <laughs> winging it uh, make as I go Okay, so now I am mixing, I'm going to show you, navy blue and black. Now you'll notice I am kind of going in a pattern. And so that all the waves maybe, there's one flow to the water. Now we're just going to go with straight black. Now we're going to take, um, this is a fan brush. This is all staying pretty wet, I guess, uh, just because I went pretty thick with it. And now we're just dabbing it, uh, just kind of blending it out.
you'll notice I'm kind of doing lines uh, just to create some little waves. Let's put a little bit of the uh, desert turquoise on our palette here. It's hard, you don't want to ever overwork it, um, but great thing is, I know it's frustrating, but if it just ends up looking like garbage, <laughs> you just repaint it that solid blue again and start over. It's hard because you want it to turn out the first time that you do it. Okay, so the other side is finished. Um, now I am just taking the Calypso Blue. Uh, it's kind of a, a turquoise. Um, adding lots of water to it. And Thankfully, everything is still kind of wet. So we're just softening the edges. And we're only going around the outer edge. You have to remember to keep rinsing your brush off. Just rinse it out in the water. Otherwise, you're going to be picking up the black and the dark blue, and things could get muddy. It'll end up being all dark. So, I'm going to switch sides here. Just doing a circular motion with the fan brush. And honestly, this is the same, basically the same technique I did on the clouds, um, just on a bigger scale, that's all. Okay, we're still unable to do any dry brushing because um, I don't know if you can tell on camera but it's still kind of wet but possibly when I get a chance to really stand back and look at it um, it might just be good enough okay so I'm taking the Calypso blue and let me grab the navy the navy blue. So very little bit of the navy blue, mostly the calypso blue. And it's still pretty wet. And let's see if we can't get some little waves. And then someday I will pour, uh, I don't know if I'll do resin or I'm not quite sure the technique I'll do yet. So now I'm just putting in very tiny little waves. And you can definitely see them at first, but then they start to sort of soak into the wet paint and they become lighter. Okay, you can see I'm starting to pick up some of the dark blue and black, so it's not really effective, not as effective. So I may have to clean my brush, and, but this might be it. Just like the clouds, we're only using two brushes. 
so this is really probably uh, uh, maybe an inch and or a little under an inch and the other one is three inches and that's all we're doing so it's all about really uh, the angle that you use uh, how you tilt it you can get a variety of shapes and sizes by the way that you um, hold the brush so now we're just putting some very small highlights where uh, where we think the maybe the higher waves would be have to be careful because the paint is still wet so we don't want to get too much black on our brush. I'm just kind of hitting the areas that are already kind of a light blue. So we're just going to do some lighter little ripples and waves right around the land. Do the same up here. We don't want to use too much of this color is turquoise uh, because we don't want it to look like it's a tropical island <laughs> you know, this water would probably be pretty dirty so that's another thing you should um, use photo reference um, if you're modeling a certain area to see what the uh, color of the water is. Now, the great thing about painting on um, this styrofoam is that it is coated. So now we can still I'm going to let this dry overnight and come down in the morning and see what it looks like. Um, if I think that it's too blue looking, um, too much of a, like a, a turquoise in it, um, I may put a wash over the entire thing of uh, sort of a gray, a gray mix. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll just have to see. but. It's an option um, after this point if you want to do uh, you know light washes of a really you could do a light wash of a super watered down black uh, a, a greenish gray um, you could really dull it down to the specific area that you're modeling so uh, but we'll look at it in the morning and see what it looks like. Hey, we're not done yet. Um, I did a little bit more painting on the water, just a little bit here and there, and uh, I was very happy with it. So what I did was uh, I put a clear coat over the entire thing. And um, after I get structures and piers all in place, um, I will go in with uh, Mod Podge or uh, Liquid Tex makes a product. Um, it's, a, it's a clear, it's a paste that you smear on and it dries a, a glossy clear. Uh, so I'll use either one of those, uh, but I'll actually add a little bit of texture to this and then. Um, I'll put it around like the, the pilings on the piers. Uh, just create some little waves here and there. So um, I, I'm extremely happy with how this has turned out. Um, it smells. <laughs> it smells. And I'll show you quick. Um, this is what I used.
Uh, and I think the reason it smells so bad is that this is not water base. Uh, you actually need mineral spirits to clean your uh, your brush or turpentine or when you're done just throw away your brush uh, but there's quite an odor now um, in my house <laughs> so uh, it's going to take some time to to air out but uh, uh, within a day it'll be it'll be gone so So the next thing I'm going to focus on, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a break from the layout and head over to the workbench and start working on some structures um, that go in specific areas. Uh, like the rocks on the side here, that there will be um, little docks or piers with pilings that um, you'll walk out on a section, then there'll be a few stairs, you'll go down to another section, walk down a few stairs, and on to another section. And on each level, there will be little structures. So lots of small structures with um, lots of stairs that need to be built um, and same with over here, I have some specific buildings that I need to build um, piers for. So, and then, uh, there, I've mentioned this before, but the, there will be a bridge that goes across right here, but it'll be a bridge that, that opens uh, in the center. So I need to do some research on building uh, that bridge so that it sort of looks accurate. Um, I don't get too hung up on making things look exactly how they are in real life. Being an artist, I use more of um, an artist eye. Uh, I go more for appearance, what is going to look good. Um, you know, I think with this bridge, having it split in the center, I think I'll have it open maybe not even half maybe a quarter of the way i'll have it open a little bit um, i think that'll look nice okay so uh that's really it now for this episode and uh i will see you on the next video happy modeling everyone